Francisco and Zaragoza, Spain. And with this segment of Lessons for Entrepreneurs, and I'm speaking with Martin Mikos. He's a former CEO of MySQL. Martin sold MySQL in 2008 Correct. for $1 billion to Sun Microsystems. Martin, thank you for joining me. My pleasure. You've had a lot of experience as a CEO for mm -hmm. many startup companies. So yeah. give us three pieces of advice for the entrepreneurs watching. Well, one piece of advice is that things always take longer than you plan. And an entrepreneur must be optimistic and believe in big, big things. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, reality will come slower and may not be that big. Mm -hmm. So living in this sort of duality of very ambitious plans, huge ambitions, and then some things just take more time. Okay. So being realistic, it doesn't happen overnight. No, no. And, no. and as an entrepreneur, you need to be optimistic. But being realistic as well, but you have to right. be optimistic. Right? Yeah. Okay. But you must have two sides to yourself. Right. You must keep going and be an optimist, but at the same time, you must face the brutal truths. Mm -hmm. This, by the way, is very well explained if you know the um, Admiral, now I'm blanking on the name, um, the U.S. Admiral who was a prisoner of war in Vietnam for many years. Okay. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll look him uh, up on Google. Yes. So, so he had this principle, or he said that, that the pessimists wouldn't survive in the prison mm -hmm. because they gave up. The optimists wouldn't because they were too hopeful. Mm -hmm. And it was only by having an unwavering faith in that he would ultimately get out, mm -hmm. at the same time being ready to face the brutal truth of every day. Mm -hmm. Admiral Stockdale, that's his name. Oh, okay. And, that is and I think it applies to entrepreneurs that you must believe that one day everything will be perfect, and until then you're ready to go through whatever pain you have to go through. And he went through torture, so okay. it's not comparable. I mean, torture is much, much I was going to say, it's entrepreneurship like yeah. being in prison. But, and but if you allow the metaphor, it, it is very relevant because you must be ready to just yes. sacrifice everything, commit completely, and know that one day somehow it will, everything will be sorted out to your favor, not that you know how. But the currently. big theme here is fail fast. So how do you know when to to fail fast. Yeah, that's another tricky, tricky thing because things take time and at the same time you shouldn't throw good money after bad money. Right. And you should fail fast and then scale fast. And I don't really have a generic piece of advice because sometimes I've just kept pushing and pushing mm -hmm. even beyond the rational mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I've been rewarded. Mm -hmm. And then at other times I've stopped and I realized I stopped too early. Mm. So it, it's a tough judgment call, but you, I guess an entrepreneur just needs to be very sensitive to the fact of knowing when is it time to stop and right. try something else, yep. and when should you just keep going. What other pieces of advice? I think we talked earlier about focus, which is very difficult. Every entrepreneur makes that mistake of trying to go in multiple directions at right. the same time. Right. Again, this is based in the fact that to be an entrepreneur you must be optimistic, you must believe in your own skills and um, abilities, mm -hmm. so you think you can do a lot, which you should think, mm -hmm. but still you need to force yourself to just focus, focus and focus. And people sometimes mistakenly believe that by having multiple lines of business or multiple products they can grow faster, mm -hmm. but that's a fallacy. Mm -hmm. To grow faster you must focus. How do you determine which line, revenue line to focus on? Is it the one that brings you revenue today? You must have a vision for the company and know what it ultimately is about. Uh -huh. So Michael Dell, he focused very, very much on a specific type of PCs for a specific audience, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they did nothing else, and they just grew like crazy. Mm -hmm. Or IKEA, when they started with furniture, very focused on specific things. Now they've expanded, so they have anything you need for a home, but they, they were very focused in the beginning. Now, MySQL, you were CEO of the company when you were brought in when there were 12 people. Right. And when you sold it, there were 400. So what was the biggest challenge growing the company from 12 to 400? 
for any CEO, I would say the biggest challenges are always people challenges, mm -hmm. and included in that is you yourself. You're, that's, that's the biggest challenge. Yes. <laughs> so you need to manage yourself, and to manage yourself, you need to understand yourself. Okay. So you need to have a very high level of self-awareness, mm -hmm. and you need to accept yourself. Mm -hmm. So. I've seen CEOs and maybe myself in my past yeah. where I would be blind to my own characteristics mm -hmm. and I would, I would be in denial about them or I wouldn't be ready to change them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I didn't accept myself. Mm -hmm. But once I came to a level where I said, I'm bad, I'm crappy, I'm, I have bad judgment, all of that, but hey, I'm here, I'm doing my, the best I can. And then I learned how to program myself and be more efficient. And you have to change. I mean, a CEO at a 12-person company is very different from a CEO of a 50-person yeah. and yeah. 400. So yeah. is there an underlying characteristic that a CEO that can manage from 12 to 400 to 12 to 15, you know, 1,500 people? Is there something that, if I want to know, if I'm that CEO, right. you're saying I need to be aware of myself. What yeah. is that characteristic quality in me that I have to... So I think you must be open to learn new things and open to abandon old things. Okay. So I intentionally told myself that there were certain practices that I needed to abandon, abandon by delegating them or abandon by just abandoning them. Okay. And, and I also asked people whom I met, I said, what do I need to learn now? What's mm -hmm. the next level I need to go to? What, what should I do to be now able to manage not 50 people but 100 or not 100 but 200. But it was the desire in you to want to do that. So Correct. You, and you learn from other people yeah. how, what you need to do to yeah. manage. Yeah. And, okay, so and, and I had people who just told me okay. without me even asking. <laughs> Any real tough decisions you made as a CEO that really showed that you actually uh, <laughs> you can make the tough decisions? We had tough decisions on the business model. Mm -hmm. because we are balancing between open source and making money, so mm -hmm. those were very tough decisions. Mm -hmm. I've made tough uh, decisions on hiring and firing people. Mm -hmm. The tough ones are typically the one where you fire people. Um, so those are the tough ones. And then when we just were ready to go public mm -hmm. to decide that I would favor a trade sale to Sun Microsystems, mm -hmm. that was a very big decision for me. And I didn't decide on the sale but I decided that I would be in favor of it. Right. It, it, that was a collective decision. Well, it was a decision by the shareholders. Shareholders, but, yeah. But they asked me for my recommendation. And one last question regarding the way you manage your company in very distributed operations. I don't know if right. there's a lesson learned, you know, or would you do it again if yeah. you had a, built another company with 400 people no, you know, with no offices? That was, that was the right way to go? So I think that offices are so last century. Okay. You know, We've had offices in mankind for about 500 years or 400, mm -hmm. yeah. but the human being is good at working on his or her own, where he lives or where he enjoys his life. And why have offices when you can have the Roman theater? Exactly. Yeah. So it's not suitable for everybody, but there's a certain portion of the population who works very well at home. They're more motivated. They do a, a great job. They, they communicate over the web and phones and others and it works wonderfully. Not for everybody, mm -hmm. but when it works, it's the best model in my mind. Well, we like that model because we're all virtual at Vader. Mm -hmm. Thank you very so much, I. Martin. Thank you, Bambi. I've been speaking to Martin, Martin Mikos. He is the former CEO of MySQL. I'm Bambi Francisco.